Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look installing the Roadmaster base plate on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler 4xe. The Wrangler is one of the most popular flat towed vehicles and so when it comes to base plates you have tons of different options when it comes to brands. My personal favorite is the Roadmaster. Some of the other base plates run all the way across and really don't fit as well as I like. A lot of them will retain that rock guard but some of them are completely exposed. This one is uh, a considered a hidden one and that's going to be nice because it bolts up directly to the frame and really the only portion that sticks out is going to be where we trimmed here for our arm receiver as well as our safety chain loops. Uh, another thing to take in consideration is going to be how you get it installed. There are ones that are going to be a little bit easier installation but overall this one's pretty simple to do. Uh, the fit and finish is really good. It's Roadmaster so the quality is very high and something that I really like about this one is this bracket for mounting up our six pole. I also mounted up our air fitting on here. Uh, if you don't have an air fitting, you can use that for your breakaway switch, but it's specifically designed for the Wrangler. It comes with spacers that goes in where normally there's plastic push pins. You'll be able to bolt it up and that makes it super easy to get your components mounted because some of the other ones, you're gonna have to fabricate a little bit to be able to get those mounted up. Now, as you can see, this is kind of what it's gonna look like when you're going down the road. Everything sits behind the bumper pretty well, so it doesn't take away from the look of the Jeep. Uh, but when you are ready to flat tow, the arms are removable. And so to get them in place, you'll just slide them in, give it a quarter turn, that's gonna snap in place, and that's gonna allow you to hook up your tow bar. Now something to take in consideration when getting all your flat tow components set up is making sure that you're gonna have a tow bar that's going to be level with the flat tow vehicle or within a three inch range. That way the tow bar stays as level as possible, which makes it safer to tow and for the vehicle to break behind the RV. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is measure the hitch height on your RV from the ground to the center of the hitch pin hole and then compare that with our 15 inch. And from there, you can determine whether or not you're gonna be level enough. And if you're out of that range, you can take a look at a high-low adapter. And that way you can get your tow bar right in line with your base plate. And when you're ready to hook up your tow bar, it's gonna be pretty easy. And today we have the Roadmaster Nighthawk, which is one of my favorite tow bars. And that's gonna work directly, obviously, because you have Roadmaster and Roadmaster. But if you have a different tow bar, not to worry, you can get adapters to turn any base or any tow bar into a Roadmaster style end. Something to keep in mind though with that is you'll be swapping out the ends on your tow bar, but uh, the Roadmaster tow bars come with their specific pins. These are thicker than all the other competitors and those will not come with the ends generally. So if you do have a different brand tow bar, just make sure when you pick up those ends that you're also getting the pins to be able to attach it. So we'll just get our arms of our tow bar attached to our base plate. And with this one, it's specific. You're gonna to wanna to face it towards the uh, pin hole here. And that way we can loop our pin in and around. And then next we'll have our safety cables. And these are a nice spot too, easy to hook up, but still out of the way of everything. Get our diode wiring in place. We have our breakaway switch. And then once you get your other side, ours today, uh, we're using an Air Force One for air brakes on our coach. So we have our air fitting that will also get hooked up. Now at this point, all that's left to do is get your vehicle in flat tow mode and then you're ready to hit the road. Now when it comes to flat towing any vehicle, there's gonna be five main components that are gonna be required. And sometimes there's gonna be some other auxiliary things that you'll have to add in, but let's just take a look at the basics. The first thing is going to be the base plate, and that's gonna structurally attach to the frame of the vehicle, creating a mounting point for your tow bar to be able to attach to. A tow bar is gonna be the connection point between the base plate and the hitch on the RV. Now, just like towing a trailer, we have safety cables. That way, in case of an accidental disconnect, it's gonna hold everything together and the vehicle's not gonna be loose rolling down the road. We also have our diode wiring, which is gonna transmit the light signals from the coach to the taillights on the towed vehicle, and that way you stay safe, giving you your running lights, turn signals, and brake lights. A lot of uh, braking systems will also tie into diode wiring, so that is definitely something that I recommend everyone get. 
Uh, on our braking system today, we have this air coil, so you may not have that, but with all braking systems, you're gonna have a breakaway switch, and that's in case of a catastrophic disconnect. If everything was to fail, it's gonna pull this cable and bring this towed vehicle to a slow and eventually a stop, and that way it's not rolling down the highway. Now in terms of the installation, I've mentioned before that this is a pretty easy one to do and I'll walk you through all the steps to get it installed. So let's take a look at that. Now just as a, a lot of base plates uh, involve taking off a fascia, we're gonna be taking off the front bumper of our Jeep. And it really comes down to what trim level that you have. Uh, if you have a plastic rock guard or a metal rock guard, a plastic bumper, a metal bumper. So make sure that you're following along with exactly which trim you have and what combination of bumper and rock guards you have because it will change a little bit as far as the installation goes. The first thing we are gonna do is unplug the main harness that goes to our fog lamps and that's gonna be located on the passenger side. You can do this kind of uh, any point as we're taking off this front bumper, but to have it done right away, not a bad idea. And the plug just sits a little bit behind the bumper on the frame rail and you'll see it right here. Now, uh, there's a plastic Christmas tree that holds it into the frame. I suggest you can slide off the plug and it makes it a little bit easier to have some leverage to get this to separate. So just push on that center tab and sometimes these will fight you. So just take your time here. Now we're gonna be removing some plastic push pins. So I recommend having a trim panel tool. It makes it a lot easier to pry those out. If you don't have one, not to worry. You can use a flathead screwdriver. Um, but at this point, I recommend having a nice organized spot to keep all of your hardware. We're gonna be taking a decent amount of stuff off. And a lot of times, um, you know, as you're doing your flat toe components, you may wait to put the bumper on. So having that spot to keep everything there makes reinstallation so much easier. So the first two that we're gonna remove are gonna be at the top here, uh, right between our bumper and our grill. And they're fairly recessed here. You'll see that there's slots that are gonna allow you to get that trim panel tool or the flat head in place. Uh, just take your time here, get that center portion pried out first. And you should be able to get the whole thing after that. Uh, if it does separate, just make sure you have both of the pieces. So we have the one here and then one on the other side. Now underneath, there's gonna be some plastic push pins where our rock guard meets our bumper. And they're a little bit different style. They're actually fairly easy to uh, remove with the trim panel tool. Uh, you can get a little bit of bite on these ones, um, but this is what they're going to look like. So just pry on that center portion, same thing. And now you'll just go along the bottom edge here. You'll see these uh, notches that are cut out and those are going to give you that access. So just run across the bumper and make sure you get these all removed. Now, once you have all those removed, there's gonna be this recessed portion and there's gonna be an eight millimeter screw on each side. So we'll just get these removed. And once you remove the next one, just support your rock guard because it's gonna be coming down. And then at this point, we'll just set this aside. We'll be trimming this up a little bit later, um, but for now, we can just have it off to the side, ready to go. We also have a frame guard that we're gonna remove, and it's just two 16 millimeter uh, bolts that we have. So grab your socket, and we'll take these off. Now with that hardware removed, there's still tabs that hold this into place. So just simply lift this up, get those tabs out. And we're gonna trim this out just to get our mounting brackets here for our rock guard. But the rest of this, we're not gonna be using. Um, so I'll go ahead and mark this out and we'll get to trimming on it. As far as trimming it out, it's pretty easy. Uh, painter's tape gives you a nice clean line to follow. Uh, so it just kind of went above this tab where we originally had that mounting hardware and we pretty much just go straight down. I did it on this side so you can see a little bit easier without the tape, but as this triangle, the long edge here, just follow that down straight. Uh, and 
As far as cutting, you can really use anything as far as a, a Dremel. Uh, I recommend an angle grinder. It's gonna go through this pretty easily. So we'll clamp this down, get this cut out. Uh, obviously wear your safety glasses because we're gonna be throwing some sparks. With those cut out, I've gone ahead and I painted these up. So we got our raw metal covered up uh, and we're going to be bolting these back in place, but do not use the factory hardware that we removed. We're going to be grabbing uh, these bolts here and with every bolt that we put on from here on out, we're going to be using a red Loctite. This is the high strength um, and this is just going to make sure long term that, you know, with rattling and things along those lines, the bolts are never going to back out. This is going to give it a good fighting chance. So make sure you put some thread lock on here. And then we'll put these up. I'm getting them tightened down. We're going to try to center this up. Uh, you can kind of see where that washer or the inset one that's on there kind of leaves a mark here. So just trying to get that squared up. Normally this should be right along that seam. Um, we can always adjust this later, but uh, to get these tightened down, we're going to use a 17 millimeter socket. So we'll just tighten this. Do the same on the other side. Now we're going to get ready to remove the nuts on the studs from our bumper. And this is what holds it all into place at the end of the frame. Um, so you'll have four studs total, uh, two on each side of each frame rail. So just with an 18 millimeter socket, we'll get those taken out. And as far as clearance goes, sometimes you'll need to uh, get an extension or a deep well. Some of the other spots might get a little bit tight. So just take your time here and we'll get these all removed. With all eight of those nuts removed, we're ready to take our bumper off. So I do recommend having a nice uh, safe place to store this while you're doing the rest of your base plate. Um, and to get this off pretty easy, you just grab a hold on the tow hooks and kind of give it a quick tug back. Sometimes tolerances from the factory, those studs going into uh, the frame support and the frame, it can be a little bit off. So if you're fighting it, just kind of bump it back and forth. You can grab underneath and then eventually just work this off. You can then grab the tow hooks and move your bumper aside. With the bumper off, now we can attack the frame stiffeners and those just go on the outside. You'll see that they align with where the studs were and we're gonna retain this hardware. So uh, once you remove it, just have that handy uh, because we'll be using that a little bit later for our base plate. But this frame stiffeners, we're not gonna be putting those back on. So if you wanna retain them, if you ever wanna take your base plate off and go back to factory, you might wanna hold on to these. But to get these off pretty easy, just a 16 millimeter socket. And you don't actually have to remove this completely to get the frame stiffener off. You just loosen that enough, you can slide these out. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that for the remaining three. Now at this point, we are gonna to need to drill out some holes. So uh, we'll see right here, this smaller hole right above where we had our factory frame stiffener bolt. Uh, we will be passing this large bolt through. So it's pretty easy because there's a hole on both sides. So just, you know, pretty well with a 9 16th, get this perpendicular straight on. And once you drill through, you'll be able to kind of get the point of the drill bit to the other one and then we'll enlarge it. We'll just roll that through a few times and then just have this bolt ready to make sure that it passes through easily. We'll be doing this on both sides of the frame. So go ahead and get drilling. Now I will caution using a large drill bit, just brace yourself with that drill. Uh, it will want to catch and kind of throw your wrist for a loop. So you can start with a smaller drill bit and work your way up um, or just, you know, make sure you're bracing that drill. So with that drilled out, I'll grab my bolt and that should pass through nice and easy here. And we're looking good. So I'll just go ahead and repeat on the other side of the vehicle. 
Now to get our base plate onto our frame, it's not too terribly hard to do, but there is gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to check, and that's gonna be the spacing between the bracket and the frame rails. It's gonna differentiate between different uh, trims or just from manufacturing, there's gonna be a little bit of tolerance differences, and that's where our washers come into play. So I would recommend just kind of grabbing a stack of these. Uh, I've already gone ahead and done our one side and determined that we need just one washer per side. Uh, now that goes consistent. So if you are putting a washer as a spacer, you're gonna wanna put uh, one washer or whatever count of washers that you have on the remaining holes to close up that gap. So the way to determine that, you slide this up and just seeing the variance between uh, where it bolts up, you can see that there is a slight gap on each side. You could almost get away with two, but it was just a bit too tight. So one washer fills up that gap. So just kind of keep that in mind as we're wanting to bolt this up. So to start, we're gonna grab our long bolt that we have here. We're gonna put a flat washer on there. We're also gonna be putting these pipe spacers on both sides, and this is just for the top one. So grab two of those. And I'll slide this back up. And this is gonna go through the hole that we drilled. So what I'm gonna do is just slightly put this through. And I mentioned that one washer that we're gonna put as a spacer, but we also have our pipe spacer. So just kind of put these in place here. And you may need to hold that base plate up. But once we get this aligned, pass this through. And then on this side, we're gonna do the same combination. So we'll do our one washer and our pipe spacer. And then you may have to lift the base plate up just a little bit to get this all aligned. And also it might help to have uh, just a, a flathead screwdriver to align this if you need to. You can kind of just slide that in place until you can get the bolt to pass through. And put a little bit of thread lock on here. And then we'll finish this one up with a flat washer, a split washer, and then a nut. We can then grab our next long bolt. We'll put our washer on our bolt, and this is gonna pass through here. Uh, now we do need to get our washer in place. So it is kind of tricky if you can. Uh, what I recommend doing is grabbing some tape and just taping the edge to where you can drop this in place. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go grab my painter's tape and that way we can slide this in. So just uh, double over that tape with that washer just kind of hanging on there and there should be enough of a gap. Uh, and that's why it's important. Don't tighten this down, just hand tighten that in place because you may need to kind of wiggle it side to side to get uh, you know, just a little bit of movement to be able to get the washer in place. And uh, I did recommend having that flathead screwdriver ready to go so that way when we do drop it down if we just catch the little bit of edge of that washer we should be able to kind of pull that into place so you can see here I'm able to kind of feed that in I'll just pull that over with my flat head I can pass this through And then we may need to repeat that same process on the other side. This one's actually a little bit easier because you can just slide this in. Now, something I'll point out that I noticed was some of the washers are a thicker uh, you know, diameter or width than the others. So that can make a little bit of a difference here. Um, so I'll try to get this one in place here. But again, you may need to you know, move the base plate around to slide this in, but we should be able to get this in place. So I just kind of dropped it in there, shook it a little bit, and that kind of Put this in a spot where I can get the opening. And then we'll pass our bolt through here. And then we'll do the same combination that we did at the top. Now we're gonna attack the factory weld nut that's here. Uh, where we had a, our factory bolts for those frame stiffeners. We'll get this in place with our washer as well. And we'll do the same on the other side. Now with these, all the, our hardware in place here, our last one is gonna be this nut plate. And it's got this little handle. This is gonna feed up in the bottom. 
and we're going to be bolting. Uh, we'll have this bolt with a split washer and a flat washer, and that's going to go into this lower hole. Now, it can get kind of tricky. You're going to feed this up and try to thread this through. You can bend this tab. Just be careful not to break it off at the weld that's on the plate. But if you need to bend this to contort it to where it's nice and flush to get this in, by all means, do that. And something I've noticed is uh, right here, there's this large opening. Use that to kind of guide it. Uh, because if you hold this in place and try to thread it, you're going to get pretty frustrated. You might get lucky and get it to start, but uh, being able to at least see where you're going through this hole definitely helps. I got fairly lucky here with just a few bends. I'm able to kind of get this aligned, but it's still pretty tricky. And again, you may need to move the base plate around to get the hole to align. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead, we'll get this threaded in and get that started. Now before we tighten anything down, we actually need to get the bumper in place and that way it's gonna slide through everything and then we can torque it down. Um, so something that I've noticed with a lot of Jeeps is uh, the tolerances here are not very good. Uh, so you already have three larger holes. This one's a little bit smaller and trying to get those to push through can really be a fight. So the first thing I would recommend doing is grab a 3 8 extension and that's about the right size to fit through all of these. And just kind of use that to get as straight of a shot as possible here to where you can see that the bracket's not really getting in the way of those factory holes. And on this smaller one, it's up to you. You don't have to do this, but to burr bit, I generally like to run this through to open that up a little bit. It'll make it a lot easier when trying to get that bumper in place um, as you will be tend to fighting it. Uh, so I'll just enlarge this one out. And then we'll just repeat on the other side make sure everything's nice and aligned. Now something that you may need to do is trim out uh, the fog light cover on the back side of the bumper. Now ours is just this straight line, um, so we don't have any issues here. But if you have like a slight corrugation style, uh, you will want to trim that out. And that's going to give us the clearance for that base plate to slide through uh, while getting your bumper on. But if yours is like ours today, you should be okay. Um, we should be able to slide this in and it won't cause any issues. So with that being said, if you need to, go ahead, trim that out. Um, but otherwise, we'll go ahead and get our bumper on. So just as we took it off, use the tow hooks to kind of guide this up. And a good rule of thumb to know that you have it all the way in place is those plastic push pins that were up top. You should be able to see that those align with those holes. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get the 18 millimeter nuts that were on the back studs on and we're going to tighten those down. And then once everything's in place, we can start tightening and torquing down our hardware. Now something I'll recommend, you probably noticed as you were putting the nuts on the studs on the bumper, it's pretty tight on the outside, probably tight to where you really can't get a socket on there. Um, so what I'll recommend doing is tightening up our base plate first and that'll kind of draw it in a little bit. And since we have the studs in place, everything's going to be aligned fine. Um, but I think tightening this down might make it a little bit easy for us. So the first thing that we want to tighten though is going to be our factory bolt. Uh, it's going to be just that 16 millimeter socket to accomplish that. So we'll get this tightened down first. Now for the remainder of our hardware, uh, we'll have those large bolts. We're going to want a three quarter inch socket and a three quarter inch wrench. Uh, we're going to tighten on the nut side. So we're going to come back with a torque wrench, so no need to get crazy here. You don't need to be using an impact or anything like that, but we want to just draw everything in and snug it up. So we'll do our long bolts first. And then this bottom one, just be careful. You want it to draw in and get tight, but don't go too crazy yet because we need to torque that down. And if this is off, sometimes uh, it'll just keep spinning. So just snug this down nice and easy. And we'll get uh, the other side tightened down as well. And then we'll grab our torque wrench. So now with our torque wrench, just get the torque setting from the chart in the instruction manual. Just make sure that you're changing that torque setting according to the hardware size. 
and we'll just go through and torque all of our hardware down in the same process that we uh, tightened it. Now, as far as that factory bolt, there's really not a torque setting that I've found, so just snug that up as necessary. And if you need a torque wrench, you can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free, but this is gonna be important to make sure that it's obviously gonna be tight enough to tow our Jeep down the road, but also not too tight, putting stress on any of the hardware. Once everything's tightened and torqued down, these tabs, you can break them off pretty easily. Just kind of wiggle this back and forth. It may take a little bit, um, but that weld will snap off that nut plate and this will remove nice and easy. If you need to, you can also grab pliers and kind of twist it around, but shouldn't take too long. Uh, now, something that I do recommend doing at this point is grab your arm. On rare occasions, that bolt that we uh, put this small uh, rock plate back in place with will bottom out on these arms and uh, so something that you're going to want to do is just kind of quarter turn twist make sure that this is able to lock in place if it is binding uh, it's really hard to just grind down the head of that bolt um, so just you might grind off a little edge you might see that tall spot that it rubs against it and just kind of sand that down as necessary to be able to get that to lock in place Again, it's pretty rare that uh, we've run into that, but it, enough to where I want to give you a little bit of caution. Uh, at this point, our base plate is officially installed, but we do need to get our skid plate up. Uh, I mentioned earlier that a lot of times you leave the bumper off to run all the wires. That's not really the case with Wranglers, um, especially with this one, we're gonna have a bracket that mounts up, and so it's gonna really allow us to get the rest of our components set up. And as far as trimming our uh, skid plate that we have here, or our uh, rock guard, I guess we call it. Um, there are measurements in the instructions that you can follow that are a pretty good guideline. But what I like to do is mock it up specifically on the vehicle that I'm working on, and that way I can get a really nice clean cut. And remember, you can always cut off more, um, so we'll start small. So grab a chalk marker, permanent marker, a piece of tape, or something to denote exactly the width. And what I like to do is this center tab aligns in the middle. You can kind of use the uh, dip here in the license plate to kind of align that. And I'll put this roughly flush with the outside of our arms. And from here, just kind of uh, eyeball it. This should align with the hole that where our plastic pushpin was. So I'm gonna start with my width being right at the edge of our receiver tube and then on the outside of our safety chain loop. I'll do that on both sides. So I've gone ahead, I used painter's tape again to kind of mark it out using my reference marks that I made. Uh, I went down five inches. Uh, the instructions will have you go six. As far as trimming goes, a Dremel works really well. A multi-tool is kind of my tool of choice here. It gets you a nice clean line. Um, so we'll go ahead, we'll get this cut out and then we'll mock it up until we get a nice perfect fit. Uh, and then we can clean up any burrs after that. So I got everything trimmed out and then using a file, I knocked down a lot of the burrs. Um, if you don't have a file or you want just an even cleaner edge, you can take your uh, knife or honestly anything, a flat blade and just kind of drag it along. And that does a really good job of cleaning up those burrs. But this is kind of one of those steps. Uh, this is what you're gonna see on the front of your vehicle. Uh, and it's kind of hard to do once it's all mounted up. So take the time, make it look good. Uh, and at this point, I'm gonna get this mounted up and I'm gonna start by doing our lower bolts. Uh, we're going to kind of slide this up into the uh, slots where those are going to go, but uh, we should be able to get this in place. And if you need to, if you can't get it completely aligned, you can slightly bend that tab just to kind of get it started. This is going to hold it in place for us and make it a lot easier for our plastic push pins. Now, before we get our plastic push pins in, you're gonna to wanna to grab your bracket, and I highly recommend using this. This is really nice that Roadmaster includes this, and it works directly with the Jeep. A lot of times, other base plate manufacturers will just kind of give you a universal bracket, um, and it's not so easy to get these mounted up nice and clean. This one has spacers. It uses two of the factory spots where those plastic push pins were. So you're gonna to wanna to designate where you want this mounted. You're either gonna go on this side or on this side. And what I'd recommend doing is taking a look at your RV, figure out where that seven way plug is. Um, if you have an air fitting like we're gonna be doing, this has an Air Force One, our RV's already prepped. And I know that that line is on the driver's side. So as you would hook it up, just try to make it on the same side. Once you've determined that where you want it, you're gonna take the long shoulder bolt and we have a flat washer on here. I'm just gonna do one 
right now. We'll take our pipe spacer, and then on the back side, we're gonna want a flat washer and a nylon lock nut. And this spacer is gonna be just enough for us to slide this up through that hole. And I'm just gonna reach up here and get my flat washer and my nylon lock nut in place. And then we'll just repeat on the same, same hardware lineup that we had before, just on the other side. And then to snug this down, it's gonna be a 9 16th socket and a 9 16th wrench, and we'll just tighten it down. Now if you choose to, you can also flip this bracket. It'll sit back a little bit further. It's kind of up to you. Um, but at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and put the rest of our plastic push pins in place. And that's really gonna do it for the installation of our base plate. Um, so at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the rest of my flat toe components set up, and then we'll be ready to hook up and get to flat toeing. Now something else that you're gonna wanna remember to do, plug in that harness that we unplugged earlier for our fog lamps, and also don't forget the two plastic push pins up top. And that was a look at installation of the Roadmaster base plate on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler 4xe.